Today I'm going to be showing you the best way of running Minecraft on an Apple Silicon Mac. So if you've got an M1, 2 or 3 Mac, then this is going to be the tutorial for you because we're going to be installing Minecraft using the native version of Java, which is going to be optimized for the Mac hardware. And we're also going to be making use of the Prism Launcher, which is by far the best way of managing your Minecraft installation on a Mac. We can use this to easily install mods like Forge, we can use Sodium Rendering, and we're going to be making use of Iris Shaders to completely transform transform the look of Minecraft on your Mac. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Prism Launcher website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. So this is Prism Launcher or prismlauncher.org. And what we're going to do here is go to the download section. I'm going to click on this tab here for Mac OS. So the version that we want is the universal version here. So click on this and then click allow. And then this is going to start its download. So just let this download now. And then if we go to Finder within our downloads folder, you'll see the Prism Launcher here. So it's a .tar file. Double click on this to extract. And it's going to go ahead and extract here. So I'm going to install this into my applications folder by dragging and dropping it, putting it into the applications folder, and then click on this. And then I'm going to scroll down here to find Prism Launcher and then double click on this. So if we're opening it for the first time, what we need to do is to hold on the control key. So control key on your Mac here, and then click on the application and then click open. Then we can bypass this Apple gatekeeper check here and then press open. So here we've got the language selection. I'm gonna click on British English. And next we come to the Java selection window. So if you have a version of ARM64 Java, that's preferable here, but we don't have a version available right now. So we're gonna go ahead and download one. So I'll leave a link in the description for the Oracle website. I'm going to be downloading an ARM64 compatible version of Java for macOS. So we're going to scroll down here. I'm going to find the JDK 17. You might be tempted to use the latest version, which is JDK 21, but JDK 17 has better long-term support and it's going to be more compatible for Minecraft. So trust me, uh, you won't be able to create a world correctly on JDK 21, but JDK 17 does work on a Mac. So what we want to do is to click on the macOS tab here, and I'm going to download the ARM64 DMG installer. Just click on this and then allow this to download into your downloads folder. Now within the downloads folder under Finder, we're gonna find JDK 17 Mac OS, double click on this DMG, and then we're gonna double click on this JDK PKG. So this is basically the installer, press continue, install for all users, and then click install. Then we're gonna type in our Mac OS password, click on install software, and it's gonna go ahead and write the files into place. And the install has succeeded, press close, press keep. And now when we go back into the Prism Launcher, we can click the refresh button and we can see here JDK 17.0.10, which is the latest version 17 at the time of recording, is now available. You might also want to bump up your memory allocation here. So I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, so you can bump this up higher if you want to. I'm going to put mine to 8 gigabytes and then we're going to click next here. And then here we're going to press next as well. And here we're going to press finish. So now Prism Launcher has launched, what we want to do is to add our accounts. So we need to add our Microsoft account here, click on Manage Accounts, and we want to add a Microsoft account here. So I'm presuming that you have a Microsoft account with Minecraft Java attached onto it. Uh, what we're going to do here is now click on Open Page and Copy Code, and then we're going to enter our code here by right-clicking or command v here to enter the code, press Next. What we need to do now is to enter our Microsoft account details. So if you don't have a Microsoft account with Minecraft already, then consider going to the Minecraft.net website, basically buy Minecraft and make a purchase for the Windows Mac Linux version, click buy now. You want to either create or associate this Minecraft purchase with your Microsoft account. Make sure that you buy the Java and Bedrock version. The Java version is the one that we're actually installing using Prism Launcher. So anyway, we're going to type in our Microsoft username and password, one with the Minecraft attached account to it. So once we're done, we're now signed into Prism Launcher. So I can minimize this. And now it's saying that we're logging in basically to our account. And now that's done, we can press close and we can now add an instance. So I'm going to add an instance, which is basically the word for creating a new world and I'll click on add instance here. And you can see here, we can install the latest version, which is 1.20.4 at the time of recording, press okay. And now we can go ahead and double click on this. And it's going to go ahead and download all of the dependencies or the assets, basically downloading the entire Minecraft game for the first time onto your Mac through Prism Launcher. Once that has fully downloaded, it just takes a couple of minutes, we're ready to launch. So double click on here and then we can launch the game. So we've got our Java edition ready now and press continue. And we can basically go ahead and create a single player world if we wanted to. So I'm going to create a creative world. It's now generating a world for us. I'm going to maximize this so you can see it in the window. And basically our world is complete. So we can see everything here. 
This is Minecraft in its most basic form working on the Apple Silicon Mac. However, we want to be a little bit more ambitious. We're going to get some mods and shaders installed here. So I'm going to close this and show you how to get mods and shaders installed. So basically within the instance that we just created, what we can do is select it and then click the edit button here. And then we can go to mods and we're going to press this download mods button here. And then we're going to install some mods. So in order to install any mods first, we need to install what's called a mod loader. So within version here, we're going to click install loader and we're going to install fabric. So this is just one of the many different loaders that you can have. Let's install the latest version of fabric here. Press OK. And then that's now downloaded. We can now download some mods too. Within the mods tab here, we're going to click download mods. And then you have a choice of two different mod repositories. They're both basically the same. I'm going to go ahead and select the most popular mods that you should probably be using. So firstly, you're going to select fabric API, which is a foundation for a bunch of other mods. We're going to install Sodium, which is a modern rendering engine, which is going to make Minecraft run a lot faster. We're going to select Iris Shaders, which is going to help, which is going to allow us to run shaders. Another one is the mod menu, which allows us to tweak mod settings within the game and cloth config API. That's required for mod menu to work. Another thing that I like to do is to run an FPS display mod because when you use F3 to show the stats of Minecraft, it actually lowers the frame rate. So FPS display is going to be the most accurate way to actually display frame rate. And then basically once we're done, we're going to press the review and confirm button. And then these are the mods that we're going to install today. There's plenty of other mods that you can install too. So press OK. And then here it's gone ahead and downloaded everything for us. So that's all ready to go. The other thing that I want to do is to download shaders too. So I'm going to click on download shaders here, and then we can search for shaders. So here you're going to download complementary shaders. We're going to select both versions of complementary shader. You can also get shaders like BSL shaders. Just select all the ones that you think that you might want to try. So press review and confirm, press OK here, and then those are all automatically going to be downloaded by Prism Launcher. So we're now ready to go ahead and test this out properly. So just double click on our world again. And now this is all loading up. So now I've just maximized this, go to single player. We're going to go back to our world again. And now this world has run it correctly. So you can see that the frame rate is in the top left corner. You can see it's running a bit faster. We can also F3 by holding down the function key on the keyboard and then pressing F3. That'll give us a bit more information. But uh, basically this is all rendering now. So you can see the frame rate in the top left hand corner and that's all working with all the mods. So you can go into mod setting here. You can change the actual mod settings now that we have mod menu and cloth API all installed. So now I'm going to do is show you how to get shaders working. So here's a nice spot uh, in the distance with some water, which I'm going to demonstrate. So I'm going to press escape and then we're going to go to options. And because we have Iris installed, we have some extra options with video settings. If we go to the right hand side, what you could do is widescreen this and then click X on bias a coffee. And then you can basically see the shader packs button on the top right. So I'm just going to show you here. We have the shader packs button, and then we have all of the shaders that we downloaded through Prism Launcher. So for example, here, I'm going to select complementary reimagined. So I'm going to be using complementary unbound. And what you should do as well is change some shader pack settings. So I'm going to click this button here, and then basically we can tweak some of the kind of performance settings on here. So normally I'll say using like something like low is pretty good. You can change the visual style if you like. And basically we'll press apply here. Just give that a moment to actually apply. And then press done. And you can also change some of the settings here. Take the frame rate off, turn V-Sync off, etc. We can see the proper performance. And here we can see 225 FPS. The game looks completely different. You have um, really nice colors and graphics and reflections, which weren't there before. So basically it looks pretty beautiful. It looks pretty good. It's a huge difference in terms of actual frame rate. So 200 frames per second compared to what we had before. So if we have, if we go back to shader packs, we can disable this. You know, we were getting 600, 700 frames per second, 800 frames per second before, but shader packs add a huge performance hit. So just be aware of that. It depends on the speed of your Mac. Um, but uh, the native ARM Java does a lot of work in making this uh, run a lot faster than it did. If you didn't have sodium as well, this would run a lot slower as well. So now you can see 200 frames per second using a shader pack. 
even on low, it's still pretty impressive because it really overhauls the look of this game. And one last tip as well is that if you want to change the resolution of Minecraft rendering in order to increase the performance, all you need to do is to go to the video settings menu and then I'm going to press the keyboard combination shift P and that's going to open up a brand new menu. This is going to show a resolution slider at the top of the screen. Right now it's set to 4K, which is a little bit high. You can go ahead and slide this to the left to lower your resolution. For example, 1920 by 1080 p is actually one quarter of the resolution of 4K. It's going to allow the game to run a lot better. So anyway, that's how you install mods on Minecraft using Prison Launcher and get shaders working too. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.